and zero dollar fraud liability. Oh. On a heartbreaking Fansville by Dr. Pepper. So this is goodbye? Tech's moving to a new conference. So we're not rivals anymore? What about our history? This realignment's bigger than us both, but here, I got you something to remember me by. Dr. Pepper, zero sugar? Zero. Like the odds of you making the playoff. Gotta go. I'll always hate you and your overrated school. I'll hate yours, too. We're still gonna out-recruit you. We have higher academic standards. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. You prepare for the unexpected. So do we. True Work builds workwear offering technical performance fabrics and an integrated workwear system so you can perform at your best. True Work. Behold, a new breed. Ready to swarm. Ready to sting. The defiant, power-packed, all-new hybrid electric Dodge Hornet RT. Performance electrified. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by In at the Mission San Juan Capistrano Autograph Collection by TCS Transportation Charter Services and by Principal. When you take care of your team, they take care of business. We are having just a whale of a time here at the 2023 SoCal Challenge Championship game. The Bradley Braves, the UTEP Miners, a battle of unbeatens. And the Braves with a one-point lead out of our first time out tonight as we settle in for the first of two college basketball games inside J. Sarah Pavilion. Elijah Jones, a straight on three. And a rebound for Damarian Birch, true freshman off the bench for Bradley. Birch loses the handle, a takeaway for Calvin Solomon. Solomon goes coast to coast and draws a foul. That's on Malavai Leons, his first. Nice little change of pace there. And again, the defender was not low, sitting in that stance, moving his feet. He saw the angle and he was able to get that just half an inch to be able to create the separation and draw the foul. Calvin Solomon, 25 minutes, had 13 points, wound up fouling out against Cal on Monday, and we had a few of those late in that game, a game that had a combined 54 fouls, very physical semifinal matchup. Well, you talk about physical, Solomon is that, he's a Swiss Army knife, he did so many good things the other night. He's good enough, he can guard all five positions, and he's sort of a wrecking ball offensively, just puts his head down and he gets to the rim. First lead for UTEP. Miners had seven ties and ten lead changes in that game against Cal here a couple of nights ago. Look how far, Chris, they have to start their offense. That's because of the pressure. Jonovic, the 7-1 center, off the bounce. And his first bucket off the Bradley bench. Seven foot one, pretty skilled to be able to put it on the floor for that direct line drive. A little Jovic, Joker flavor there. A little bit. Corey Camper Jr. loses the handle. And out of bounds off the minors. I tell you, in this game, if you're not going to guard, no one wants to step in front of the big fella. He just put it into another gear. Now, that might be a little bit slow-mo if we're talking NBA, but, uh, but perfect, perfect play for the big man to go in and get the easy bucket. John Dos Anjos has checked in off the UTEP bench, played five minutes here on Monday. Miners picked up a power five win for the first time since December 2020 when they knocked off Cal in this building. Reach in foul against UTEP. What Bradley's going to have to do, they're trying to deny that, deny that initial pass uh, right off the, uh, the top of the key, the three-point line. So now your pressure releases have to come. So people have to become visible. You cannot stand when you see them denying the entry pass. Braves have opened just two of seven from the field. One for three from deep. UTEP does a nice job switching, staying in front of their men. Damarian Birch up top. Atlason around the shot fake, takes it to the rim and missed it. 
Here comes Otis Frazier, and he thunders it through. A run-out dunk for UTEP. Well, that's exactly how UTEP wants to score. They want to get to the paint. They want dunks. They're downhill drivers, and they play in attack mode. And all that usually helps them get to the free throw line as well. A junior from Buckeye, Arizona, in his second season with the Miners, transfer from George Mason. Marion Birch watched by Terrell off balance tried to flip it in off the glass Leon's with a second offensive rebound and a tough bucket underneath where I love the multiple efforts to hit the offensive glass because that defense is frantic on the other end Foul on the floor before the shot attempt. It's yeah. on to Marion Birch. You know, the freshman right there, he kicks the basketball out. Easy pickings to be able to score. And again, that's the best and the most fun way to score in basketball. Off a turnover, off a missed shot, a miscue. Just get it, pitch ahead, good things happen. Up goes Frazier. <laughs> He really impressed me the other night defensively. Really plays the gaps well and it, it really anticipates on defense. SoCal Challenge Championship. One point lead for the Bradley Braves. Sid Powell had the game winning assist the other night to set up. Tay Hardy on the game winning three and turns it over. You know, it's just interesting on the other end, you got that pressure defense. With Bradley, what you see is what you get. You've got 10 eyeballs on you. Everybody's in the gaps. They're, they're, they're going to help. And they, they move five guys on a string. It's really hard to get by those white jerseys unless you're in transition, which is what UTEP likes to do. Third minor turnover of the early going. They gave it away 13 times against Cal on Monday. Miner shows some full court pressure. And Birch works across the midcourt strike. Well, he was really impressive. He had some great passes on Monday night for a youngster out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A top 10 recruit out of the state of Wisconsin in the most recent recruiting cycle. Hannah in trouble underneath. Duke Dean a contested three. And it's rebounded by Powell. Where the two back cuts set up that shot, even though it was a miss. Good read by Bradley. Powell tried to put it in off the window and draws a foul. But he's one of the most athletic guys on the floor. Such a physical driver, and he plays in attack mode, and he likes to covet the contact and play through it. Just a tough kid. Sid Powell did a little bit of everything Monday against Cal. 13 points, six rebounds, three assists, four steals, top 30 nationally at Buffalo last season in steal rate. A terrific two-way player for Joe Golden. UTEP, his fourth school in four years, started at the Community College of Beaver County, then a season at Harcum College, last season at Buffalo, and then he said, you know what, enough with this Northeast thing. I'll try El Paso. <laughs> Plus, he's got a lot of frequent flyer miles. This game is tied. Both sides shooting south of 30% through the first seven and a half minutes here. Dean, the 5'8 senior point guard in his second season at Bradley, crossing blades with Zid Powell. With this team, they, they, they're just relentless on their switching, they're talking, keeping you in front. Birch on a baseline two, had it deflected. Hannah's putback crawls out. Darius Hannah rips it away again. He'll try once more, and this one rolls off. But Bradley just relentless on the offensive glass. UTEP's looking, they're ball watching. You gotta find a body and you gotta hit him and root him out. Just way too many second chance opportunities on the other end. Powell down the lane, rejected by Hannah. Two physical defenses getting after it early in the SoCal Challenge Championship. Well, Nines on the board. I'll tell you what, if you like defense, this is the place. The dribble drive, help side comes over, blocks the shot. We've got a good one. If you're defensive minded, stay in your seat. Sports came from indigenous peoples across all directions on Turtle Island. We joined CBS Sports in celebrating indigenous athletes of the past, present, and future. When it comes to gifts, they say it's the thought that counts. Sure, but only if those thoughts are utterly unexpected. Uncommon Goods takes your thoughtful thoughts and turns them into brilliant ideas. A magic light. Oh, how about an entire light show? 
a love potion, a fireside chat, a fantastic voyage, a walk on the wild side. Oh, you get the idea. The brilliant one. Bring us your thoughts and we'll help make them brilliant gifts. Visit UncommonGoods.com, where we're all out of the ordinary. Zach was diagnosed with leukemia. He died of the therapy meant to save him. The Dare to Dream project is transforming treatment and care for kids with blood cancer. The Dare to Dream project from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Paramount Plus is kicking off a great Black Friday offer. Surprise! Starting at $1.99 per month for three months, you get all of this for this. That is insanity. Talk about a win. We're going to change the world. If you're up to the task, I wouldn't be sitting here in my Sunday best if I wouldn't. This Black Friday offer ends December 3rd. <laughs> Your time starts now. Paramount Plus. Stream now. Well, tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern, the Hall of Fame Classic wraps with the consolation game. It's Loyola Chicago taking on Boston College. Then at 4 Eastern, we bring you the championship match as Colorado State takes on eighth-ranked Creighton. Catch it all here on CBS Sports Network. AP Top 10 into the third week of the college basketball season. Kansas suffered their first loss at the hands of Marquette last night. Purdue winning the Maui Invitational, likely going to take that top spot when the new poll comes out next week. Well, I'll tell you, I love DeWan Harris, the floor general at Kansas. When I look at that list, you see in Arizona, again, tremendous guard play, Boswell, Love, and Bradley, and, uh, and Miami, that's a tournament team. Now the inbound pass knocked into the backcourt. Shot clock in a single digits for Utah. Powell has to let it go and buries the three. Sid Powell from Dana Point connects. Boy, Norman has a driver, as we just talked about, but he can knock down a three when needed. Again, the pressure. Look where Hickman is starting the offense right now. Just get, You never get into a rhythm with this relentless pressure by UTEP. That was UTEP's first three. The Miners hit just five of them in 17 attempts against Cal. Almar Atlason and a foul against John Dos Anjos. I tell you right now, when you need a bucket, Powell can just bail you out. Just one dribble, he collects himself, he starts with the low center of gravity and just rises up and knocks it down. Nothing but net. And again, down here on the other end, Bradley did a great job with the skip pass. Because this, this, this is this is pressure every second you're on this end for a full shot clock. I tell you, every bucket will be earned tonight. Yeah, and, and you'll have some black and blue marks to show for it in the morning. Atlison left alone in the corner and hits the three. They worked on that. I, I'll tell you, Wardle is one of my new favorite coaches on that Bradley sideline of just the spacing, being able to move the ball, locate your shooters. Frazier's floater is offline. And here come the Braves. Davis drives. Davis off the window and in for two. So just taking what the defense gives you. The last bucket before was the jumper. That time, you had the driving lane to be able to go in for the high percentage score. Five straight for Bradley. They've taken a two-point lead. This match inside right there, but you see Dean just with that lower body strength at 5'8". Uh, just a good defender. But here you see a Dean with the ball on the dribble drive. A strong pivot to reverse. Just the baseline. And right there, Almar. Nothing but net. Almar Atlason was 2 of 11 from the three-point line in Bradley's first two games. He's now gone 9 of his last 10. Really skilled, Chris, for a freshman. Can play the four, the five. And he likes transition threes. And how about the big man passing as Yonovic sets up Hickman for the layup? That's a 7 0 run for Bradley over the last 60 seconds. Really interesting watching these contrasting styles of defense in both work. Connor Hickman has a game high seven points. Jones. Hits the fadeaway baseline shot. Another good freshman in this game. Strong, doesn't look like a freshman, I'll tell you that. 
first points for Elijah Jones off the UTEP bench. Jonovic, two more for the 7-1 Serbian. See, kalu has got to play better defense. On that catch, you got to square up and pin him to the sideline. He gave him an angle. It was an easy baseline move. Now Bradley has found something on the offensive end here. Well, they're just in a rhythm. They're not getting sped up. This UTEP team wants to speed you up. Create chaos and havoc. They've done it at times, but Bradley has settled in, Chris. Braves now 7 of 19 from the field. UTEP just 4 of 11. Jones with a shot clock at 3, loses the handle, recovers, and time runs out. A shot clock turnover. What an exquisite defensive possession of just help and recover. Uh, again, the offensive end, he side saddles him. All the big fella has to do is just go baseline side and finish it. You're not going through that body, nor are you going to block it. For bigs, you have to play defense before your man gets the ball. Kalu just out of position to start. Already UTEP's fifth turnover. They only average 13 a game. Davis from distance. And it bounces out. I'll tell you, Dean, back in a pistol stance, you know, and I got ball. That's old school man-to-man -man defense. Tay Hardy's been quiet early. Derek Hamilton against two defenders. And whistled for traveling. Well, Bradley giving UTEP a taste of their own medicine, Chris. That time doubling the ball. And now, again, there's no stabbing, there's no reaching. It's just a solid build a wall, stay vertical, and tech cut off all the pressure release passes. Miners forced into a sixth turnover early in this game. Only two for Bradley. A couple of teams that pride themselves on taking care of the basketball. This is a very good basketball that's being played here on both ends of the floor by both teams. Fundamental and entertaining. Hickman, step back. It's money. Cutter Hickman, his second tray. And Bradley's opened up a seven-point lead. Connor Hickman, the first player on either side, and the double figures with 10 points. Camper, tough take. Hickman deflects it. And here come the Braves. Dean has it knocked away and stolen by Tay Hardy. Look at how they get back. Solomon powers it up and it bounces in. A much needed bucket for UTEP. Timely at that, but I'm really impressed at Bradley the way they're getting back in transition defense and the way they're absorbing contact on the chest. Four points for Calvin Solomon. Hannah picked up by Hardy. And all Hardy can do is hold the big fella on his way towards the basket. 7.06, first half. Five-point lead for the Bradley Braves. Well, if you want a bucket, go to Hickman. Locked, loaded. Bradley doing it with their defense, leading to offense. We're lucky to have this team working for us. Our therapists give their all each day by helping those who need it most. We take great pride, not just in the job our team does, but in them as people, our people. And while we're in the business of taking care of others, it's important our therapists know that with benefits from principal, they're taken care of too. Reese's trees, oh Reese's trees, there's chocolate on your branches and peanut butter in your trunk. That's how all old trees should be. I'd like to eat you right now and a bag of Reese's trees. Oops, wrong song. on behind the scenes when making a shakaroni. Bust. We created shakaroni my way. An extra large pizza topped with extra cheese and extra pepperoni. It's a simple recipe. We take everything you love, then we build it bigger. Pizza gets bigger when you shakaroni. 
2023 SoCal Championship from the beautiful city of San Juan Capistrano, home of the San Juan Capistrano Mission, just a stone's throw from the Dana Point Coast on the campus of J. Sarah Catholic High School inside J. Sarah Pavilion. This place is truly a beauty. Bradley fans making the near 2,000 mile trip from Peoria, Illinois, enjoying the SoCal sunshine. Temperatures got up into, what, 77, 78 degrees today here? Chris, it's a perfect day. I mean, if you want a couple of basketball tournament where there's beaches, there's golf, there's warm weather, the SoCal Challenge is the place to go. I mean, there's a lot of places to go, but you have so much here, why not? Beautiful inbound pass drawn up by the Bradley staff, and the Marion Birch scores off the window. Look at Hickman picking up a little higher than usual now, just applying some ball pressure at half court. Bradley all of a sudden, they've connected on six of their last seven shots. Solomon inside with two more for UTEP. He's got six. One of the first times the help side defense for Bradley was not there and in position because you want to have a help sider to try and intercept that pass to deter the catch and then the score. Leons has been quiet on this end. Connor Hickman leading the way for Bradley early with 10 points. Hannah makes the extra pass. Hickman from the corner comes up short. The rebound ricochets right back to him. A second effort here for Bradley. Davis spins and he's fouled. This has really been a clinic offensively. But when you look down here, Birch, there's no play right there. That wasn't a play. That was just eye contact. They had a play that was set. But when four eyes can look at each other, it takes two to tango. Coaches love that. Hey, who are you calling four eyes? <laughs> I think you were you wearing the specs too, coach. There's eight of them sitting right here at the table. So if we oh. miss anything, I mean, come on. There's no excuse. Hey, I got to tell you, though, I, as I was about to say before the replay, what a clinic that Bradley's put it on with this offense and against this relentless UTEP pressure. You know, just knowing where guys are at, being able to skip it, looking at the back cuts, not there. Everybody's moving up. Really fun to watch. Christian Davis makes good on the second free throw. And Marion Ellis, a transfer from Marquette, has checked in for the first time for Bradley. Right here, you've got two freshmen on the top right there. Could be both of them really good players. Frazier tried to go up and under, contested and taken by Hannah. And he gives it right back. Camper, look out below, a two-hand stuff. Three-level score, athletic, just with ease, goes up for the finish. Uh, UTEP, more points off turnovers for the Miners. They had 22 of them against the Golden Bears here on Monday. That's their best offense, Chris. Ellis drives. Great help right there on the backside. Shot clock at five. Birch missed it at the rim. It was contested by Terrell. Terrell rejected by Hannah. A little Thanksgiving Eve stuffing. I, I tell you, this game has been fun. It's been frantic. There you see the pitch ahead. Camper Jr. with ease going up for the easy deuce. UTEP keeps it with 22 to shoot. Good Dean has checked back in for Bradley, replacing the true frosh, Damarian Birch. Four point lead for Bradley. Those Anjos from straight away, too strong. Rebounded by Leons. Great block out by Leons to keep Powell from getting around him. Leons with a quick step down the lane, off the glass and in. Well, how graceful was that, using his length to be able to get by him, absorb the contact, and lay it off the square. Four first half points to go along with four boards for Malavai Leons. Solomon flashes at the free throw line. Watched by the 7-1 Jonovic. Nice crossover, but he couldn't handle it on his way towards the basket. 
And UTEP turns it over. Well, you know he was going to beat his man, but right here, watch Leon's right there off the dribble drive, and he splits two defenders. He goes up, and on the other end, you know, again, it's about Bradley just having their own physicality. They don't reach, they don't gamble, they don't steal. But Hickman came over. We call that help and recover. Jonovic got beat. Hickman got a hand on the ball. That's great team defense. Seven first-half turnovers for the Miners. They only averaged 13 a game this season. Davis dishes to Jonovic, and it bounces off the back iron. Four ten left in the first half. Elijah Jones faces up on the 7-1 center. It's interesting not to see Camper try and post with Dean on him. Camper, reverse layup, he couldn't get it, but there's Elijah Jones with a stick back. But he was a mid-season transfer last year from East Carolina, so, you know, he, he might be new to some viewers, but he's been in this program, knows the system. Uh, Davis finds a lane, and he scores off the window. Both teams attacking the rim. Bradley, as good as they are from the three-point line, Coach, they have 36 paint points against Tulane here on Monday. Yeah, they just take what the defense gives you. Off those dribble drives, if you can score, no need to kick out. Those Anjos could not bounce it in. He's missed his two attempts from up there. Ellis kicks. Leon's flashes, bounces. Jonovic hesitates. Rejected by Jones. And a late whistle foul on UTEP going for the loose ball. Well, when you have teams that are aggressive like UTEP, the one that you can do <laughs> is, there I am, Chris. That's pick up here at the beach. I got next. <laughs> Buckets and beaches. <laughs> warned me about credit cards, but I found the Chime Credit Builder card and was able to build my credit with no annual fees or interest. My score went up over 60 points and I bought my first car. My next goal, a 700 credit score. Join me at Chime.com. On a cursed Fansville by Dr. Pepper. See ya. Caleb Williams, you gotta get out of here. Fansville is cursed. No, Fansville's not cursed. I swear on Dr. Pepper, it's real. I'm not superstitious. I'm number 13. 13? No! And I'm on the cover of this magazine and this video game. The compass, no! I'm literally walking under three ladders as you speak. <laughs> Ladder Emporium, no! I even have a black cat. Get out, boy! Get out! That was weird. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. You're such a good listener, Thomas. It makes me feel so special. You are. You are special. If you don't mind, if you could just... This makes me feel really special, too, because, you know, Discover's giving me cash back on debit, not just credit. Actually, Discover gives cash back on debit to everyone. Everybody? Everyone. Buddy, if you could just... What tap. about Debbie John? All those years that I couldn't find my bike, it was in her garage. Like, she gets it. If she has Discover cash back debit, then, yeah. Introducing Discover oh. cash back debit, a checking account with cash back for everyone. Introducing the new Domino's Rewards. Now you earn free Domino's every two orders. It's as easy as one, two, free. Like free Parmesan bread bites, or a free stuffed cheesy bread, or a free medium two topping pizza, or even more. Free. Order now and start earning free Domino's today. Well, coming up, AT&T at the half with Adam Zucker, Roy Hibbert, Shelvin Mack, and John Rothstein in our New York studio. We're on the other coast in Southern California. UTEP and Bradley meeting in the SoCal Championship tonight. And you can't talk about UTEP men's hoops without the story of the 1966 team, back when UTEP was Texas Western College. They beat Kentucky in the national championship. It marked the first time that a team with five African-American starters won a title game. Many moons later, a movie called Glory Road was released, documenting that Texas Western team. The Hall of Fame head coach of that team, Don Haskins, forever a legend in El Paso. UTEP, they play their home games inside the Don Haskins Center, and they have the Don Haskins Invitational every December. A technical foul was assessed to the UTEP bench, and Duke Dean hits a couple of free throws out of the timeout to grow the lead to eight. When you talk about UTEP, what a rich tradition, and what great coaches. A long time ago in the infancy of my coaching career, I was at the University of Texas. We played, I think it was the Fiesta Bowl tournament. 
and uh, the, the, their crowd was stupendous and just their fans understand good basketball and they've got a good man in Joe Golden leading the way. His theme this year, let's flip the script. That first year, 20 wins. Last year, sort of disappointing to him. I think he would say, and this year they're trying to get it right back to where they started. Ahmed Jonovic at the free throw line for Bradley. It was his first free throw attempt of the young season. And a couple makes. Bradley has a double figure lead for the first time tonight as they hit four free throws out of the timeout. It was a pretty good looking stroke by the big man. I mean, he looked at the shoot around like he had good range to 15, uh, but that's that European style of play. He only started playing basketball at 15 years old. Still very new to the game in a lot of ways, but this coaching staff has helped expedite that process for him. You see what they did coming out of the timeout now? Little zone defense right here by the Bradley Braves. UTEP just one for six from deep. They're well coached, high hands, active feet. Kalou off the glass, off the front of the iron. You see Davis go get that. Guys can rebound in their area. Good rebounders go get the ball. Duke Dean sets up Hickman in the corner. He cuts, it's deflected. Atlas in, has it knocked away and stolen. Here comes Terrell. He feeds Hardy. High off the glass and in. Count it and the foul. A chance at three for Tay Hardy. You could not have drawn that play better. When you talk about speed in this game, it's lightning quick. They're just stabbing at it. It's off the dribble drive. Gives it up to a teammate. High off the glass, absorbs the contact. That's the blueprint to the success that UTEP has had. Just create offense off their defense. First points for Tay Hardy leading UTEP at 17 points per game. A sixth year senior from Ellenwood, Georgia. Had a team high 16, five steals, and of course, the shot hurt around El Paso to beat Cal here on uh, Tuesday morning. We started that game on Monday night. We played <laughs> into the early hours of Tuesday morning. Davis couldn't get it. Leon's hung on the rim for a moment, and the UTEP bench pleading for an offensive goaltend, but they'll get it back anyway. See Joe Golden expressing his displeasure. The UTEP bench has already been hit with a technical foul in this first half. And rightfully so on that one. Bradley's led by as many as 10. Back to man to man, Chris. Right now the Braves lead is seven. Nothing fancy, you know what you're gonna get when you play Brad. Frazier lines it up and can't connect. UTEP one for seven from deep. It's not really their game on the offensive end. No, it's not. It's, it's, it's down on this end. Their offense is about this end. Live turnovers, deflections, interceptions, get it and go at jet speed. Leon spins to his left and draws a foul. Got cut underneath. And so does Frazier whacked him on the way up. Well, who could forget it? Just a couple of nights ago, after Jalen Cohn tied it on a three for Cal, Hardy with a friendly roll around. Well, he's got ice in his veins because, you know, two plays before that, he missed the two free throws, and you're thinking, oh, man, he could have put that away. They come down and hit a three, and then he comes down with that buzzer beater. And to see those kids just run out onto the floor with the pure joy to celebrate him really showed me that it's not a basketball team at UTEP. It's a basketball family. Leon's one for two at the free throw line. It was Tay Hardy's only three-point attempt of the game. Good timing. And hit 47 threes in his first season with UTEP last year, shooting 47% from distance through five games this year. 1-2-2 two, two right here, full court by Bradley. Not for steals, just trying to take some time off the clock. And now they drop back in the half-court zone. Just trying to mix it up, not let them get into a rhythm and guard the lane. Bradley comes away with another takeaway, an eighth UTEP first half turnover. Hickman down the baseline, a Euro dish to the corner. Davis across the floor, the 5'8 Dean leapfrogs off the hardwood to grab it. Five to shoot for Bradley. Dean with two, with one, and can't get it off. 
half in time. Terrific defense turned in by David Terrell Jr. That's the chaos, the havoc, the pressure that you see that this program is built on. And Joe Golding did it at Abilene Christian. He's trying to emulate it and get it done here. That was maybe their best defensive possession of the game thus far. Uh, how many times did Abilene Christian, including in that round of 64 upset against Texas in 2021, did we just see them suffocate their way yeah. to wins? And it's looking more and more like that here in year three at UTEP. And Chris, you and I saw it at the walker at the shoot around. That's how they practice. <laughs> it's about culture, and basketball is a game of habits. You can't just do it when the clock's on in a game. Here's Terrell in the traffic, and he's fouled. Well, I'll tell you, in real time, it sort of looked like Atlason was, was standing there. Unless his feet were in the restricted area, it, it looked like he was set and his hands were above his head. So David Terrell Jr. will tow the free throw stripe. Had three assists and 15 minutes off the bench Monday against Cal. This is a UTEP team. They get to the free throw line a lot, averaging 32 free throw attempts through their first five games. Well, you know, I, I talked about it. It's all paint, downhill drives, attack mode, um, and they've got such one-on-one -on -one players at almost every spot on the floor. I mean, they're, they're sort of what you would call small ball, uh, but, you know, down screens, weaves, it's all to get downhill and get into the lane. Now, UTEP grabs the offensive rebound off the free throw miss. They'll have a chance to get a little closer before the break. But Duke Dean picks the pocket of Terrell. He lobs it up. Leons hammers it down. Razzle dazzle for Bradley. The lead grows back to nine. Final seconds of the first half. Another Braves takeaway. Here comes Davis down to shoot. High off the glass. Hannah slams it back. What a finish to the first half. When you talk about a finish, that was the Bradley Braves giving UTEP a taste of their own medicine. Pressure defense on the other end, creating easy offense to continue the separation. Buckets and beaches and a couple of dunks to boot. SoCal Challenge Championship game. The Bradley Braves, a 37-26 lead over the UTEP Miners. AT&T at the half comes your way next. In this clinic, we pride ourselves on putting others first. It's on us to help care for our clients' well-being, to help them adapt. It's inspiring to work at a place where our patients succeed and we as therapists do too. With great benefits from principal, we feel appreciated for the work we do. Domino's Online will give you a free pizza to use for a future pizza emergency. <laughs> so you'll have a free pizza when you need it most. Get your emergency pizza when you order Domino's Online. There you go. Thank you. Bye. Dinner's ready. Guys, listen up. Want to try the strongest FDA-approved ED meds available? If appropriate, get Maximum Strength Generic Viagra prescribed online at 95% off. Just $2 per tablet at RexMD.com. Uncommon Goods scours the universe to find gifts you didn't know existed. Gifts that warm hearts and hands, let imaginations take flight, and always amaze and delight. Shop thoughtfully at UncommonGoods.com. When you're living with low vision, life can be a challenge. If you're 55 or older and your world has gotten smaller because of vision loss, it's time to be bold. Go to timetobebold.org for a list of services in your state that will give you the tools, technology, training, and support you need to live your bold, best life. Join others who found a bright, bold future. Go to timetobebold.org. Help is here. Go to timetobebold.org today. U.S. Marshal. I ain't here for a cup of tea. Best dedicated to justice. But each day's a lesson, and each one of them is hard. You don't scare me! You 
ready to ride. Lawman Bass Reeves. New series now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. This is AT&T at the half. Connecting changes everything. some uh, bonkers buckets by Bradley there before the half as we welcome you into our New York studios. Adam Zucker alongside Shelvin Mack, Roy sure. Hibbert, John Rothstein. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And uh, yeah, we're 30 minutes away, everybody. The countdown is the on. Countdown. Uh, but, but Bradley, Bradley doesn't need a countdown, Roy. <laughs> yeah. They're going there at the end of the half. I know, they definitely did. But for a while there in the first half, you know, uh, UTEP's pressure was really doing a, a making Bradley's guards speed up, take contested shots and everything like that. And I felt like once Jonovic got into the game, he slowed things down, got it into the paint, made some good-looking uh, passes right there for a finish right there. And he also got the ball in the paint and made something happen. No contested shots right there. And that also opened up the gates a little bit so them to go on a 7-0 run. Hickman had that three right, here, right there. He had 10 points in the first quarter right there. So I feel like having a pace, going fast sometimes, slowing it down, not just playing at UTEP speed. All right, 11-point lead right now. Let's catch up now on the two biggest games of Thanksgiving Wednesday, both coming from Honolulu, number two Purdue, and fourth-ranked Marquette meeting after top ten wins Tuesday at the Maui Invitational. With the winner today potentially moving to number one by next week, and Shelvin, we're going right to the final minute here with Marquette down three. Yes, and yeah, Igador with the nice floater. Everyone's working on the game, but the shot clock widening down. Brayden Smith just gets the ball on the rim. And Zach Eady there for the tip. Man. There you go. They had 20 to 4 in second chance points. And damn, Cam Jones on the other end. It looks good, but no good. It's an <laughs> air ball. Purdue goes on to win. Nothing but not net at that, uh, <laughs> from that angle. But big win there by Purdue. More on that in a sec. How about number one, Kansas, seventh ranked Tennessee? That's your consolation game, John. Hunter Dickinson doesn't go for consolation. No, and he didn't, Adam, today. You look at the face up shot. That was a smooth shot by Dickinson. 17 and 20 for the Michigan transfer, KJ Adams. Also getting back into remember he's playing in his natural position right now at the four. Nice pass, nice finish. Kansas gives Tennessee its second loss in a row. Second loss in a row. The first coming against Marquette yesterday, but it was Purdue then beating Marquette. So there's going to be some shuffling here in the top five. You assume the Boilermakers I go number one? I will vote the Purdue Boilermakers number one on Monday without hesitation. And you look at the wins that Purdue is already putting together. This week alone, win over Gonzaga, win over Tennessee, win over Marquette, also has a win over Xavier. Will also play Alabama and Arizona during the non-conference portion of its schedule Purdue again being in a situation where it looks like the team to beat not just in the Big Ten but maybe nationally and what did Kansas show you bouncing back today show yes Kansas should be thankful they're gonna have Maui two and one and, and uh, the way they've been playing this week Hunter Dixon have a 17 and 20 ever since the UK game the one has, has been struggling averaging three points a game and three turnovers a game you, mm. you know you want to win a championship and the other guys to come in and chip in because it's going to be tough for Hunter Dixon to continue to keep his level of play up. Yeah 20 rebounds. Yeah uh, one shy of a <laughs> career high. Great. All right now to the first day of fun in the battle for Atlantis and the final game of the night there would not end between Arkansas <laughs> and Stanford Stanford down three Benny Geeler with the buzzer beater watch this Shelvin buckets and overtime. He, yes, and we have overtime. Then we have Traymar Marks is going to extend the lead. I love the step back lefty. Gets the basket, raise it back, go up. And you got Spencer, Spencer Jones and Benny Gaylor with an opportunity to get it in. It's no good. Marks had 25, but 19 in the second half in overtime. And neither team shot all that well. There were a lot of rebounds to be had, Roy. I know you were remarking uh, watching the Razorbacks go after it. Yeah, you know, Arkansas very very much well plays a very physical brand of basketball. They had 21 offensive rebounds. And you know what? Trevin uh, Brazil, he gobbled, 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 gobbled up about eight of those offensive <laughs> rebounds. Right there. And you know, Tr uh, Tremont Mark right there, he, he had sweet 16 uh, uh, experience right there. He forced the issue right there. He had 12 of 15 uh, uh, free throws he didn't take contested shots he forced the issue made the refs call fouls and you know what that's that's pretty good right there yeah they love grabbing the transfers so mark coming in from houston to an arkansas team that's already been to three straight sweet 16s the uh, yes eric musselman the importer the importer <laughs> got it thanks thanks john all right upon our return here we're going to check in on some other ranked action from the day including virginia which looked to avoid a letdown against cross-state rival West Virginia, well, I guess across state borders. Uh, this one also going down to the final seconds. <laughs> Hey, 
ain't no secret in staying in your prime. You just gotta want it, baby. Eating almonds can help you recover from exercise. Fellas, get after it. So eat your almonds. Oh, you're proud. What's it gonna be? All right, Tandy. What's it gonna be? The drink made from whatever was laying around? Or the one made with your drizzly haul? Drizzly! Stock up today, sip well tomorrow. Drizzly. What's it gonna be? Where'd you learn to serve? Oh, I didn't serve, but if your spouse, parent, or grandparents served in the military, you can join USAA. Yeah, my grandpa did, so I'm already in, but I was talking about your serve. Oh. USAA, for the military community. With everything you have on your plate, earning your degree online seems impossible. But at Grand Canyon University, we specialize in helping you fit a master's degree in education into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Achieve your goals with a plan and team behind you. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu. We need a small business loan fast. I got this. Loan cannon! Oh. There's a better way to get a fast small business loan. Go to ondeck.com, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is on deck. Why do I choose the sleep numbers for my bed? So I can keep them all guessing. <laughs> so I know their game better than they do. So I can take my game to the next level. Because when your bed is this smart, you sleep at the right temperature all night. That's why 80% of NFL players choose the sleep number smart bed. Welcome back at the half here between Utah and Bradley. Shelvin, how about the aerial assault here at the end of the half? Yes, I love the back-to-back -back dunks as they go into the half with a lot of momentum. That was a pass, by the way. That looked like a pass. A reminder, the consolation game from the SoCal Challenge is on deck as Cal looks to rebound from that buzzer-beating loss to Utah last night, taking Sleeping on May. Tulane. Cal, one of the few teams in America actually playing in its home time zone today. Uh, <laughs> Pittsburgh also one of them. Taking on Florida. And uh, off the inbounds play. Nice move there, John. Yeah, Ish Leggett knocking it down, but then Florida going on and on. Walter Clayton Jr., the Iona transfer with that three. And then again, Clayton on the left wing. Florida exploding in the second half. You know who doesn't explode for points? That's Virginia, Roy, but they get enough. Yo, know, Leon Bond, he does not leave any turkey or rebounds on the table. Right there. Nice little put back as well. Andrew uh, Rohde, you know, gets the back screen for the paint finish right there. And then uh, Kobe Johnson takes the three. Oh, he has all the time in the world. You know, uh, West Virginia takes the lead for the first time in the half. And Ryan Dunn puts him in the spin cycle with, to finish to keep the lead going. You know, the game featured 16 lead changes and 11 ties. They got the last one from the Bahamas. Memphis, Michigan, Penny back from suspension. Juwan Howard watching as well, not coaching yet. Memphis up four there off the play by Jordan Brown, John. Yeah, Javon Quinterly at the epicenter for a lot for Memphis. Jaquan Walton with that shot. And then David Jones, the St. John's transfer with the three. Memphis, sneaky good, Adam. Still perfect, and that's it for us for now. The second half from California is on the way next. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> Giddy up. <laughs> Thank you for watching AT&T at the Half. We're in the security business. Our job is to help people feel safe. Not only our customers, but those who matter most to them. Just like our company does for us. We have great benefits from principal, so I know I'm taken care of. And not just me. <laughs> but the ones who matter most to me.
Common Goods takes your thoughtful thoughts and turns them into brilliant gift ideas. A magic light, an entire light show, a fireside chat, a walk on the wild side. Anyway, you get the idea. The brilliant one. Shop brilliantly at uncommongoods.com. When it's time for date night, he's always ready. With Rex MD, I can get generic Viagra online. Stay in the moment with Rex MD. Parenting is hard. Technology can make it harder. The family media plan developed by the American Academy of Pediatrics helps make it easier. Go to healthychildren.org forward slash media plan to create the media plan that's right for your family. Raising kids in the age of screens is easier when you have a plan. Go to healthychildren.org forward slash media plan today. Something super crazy is happening, you guys. I feel like I'm actually changing. Everyone's sick of the stupid multiverse, Cartman. Yeah. Oh, God, so weird. Yeah. Yeah, take that. <laughs> well, you know what I think about that, Cal? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> South Park, joining the Pandaverse, all new. Now streaming exclusively on Paramount Plus. The SoCal Challenge on CBS Sports Network. Championship Wednesday inside Jay Sarah Pavilion. The Bradley Braves 37-26 at the half over the UTEP Miners. With the coach Dave Miller, Chris Sylvester on hand. Impressions of that first half, what stood out to you? Well, UTEP didn't get to the paint enough. They had 10 turnovers, and I thought that Bradley gave them a taste of their own medicine. They created easy offense out of their gap and contain defense. Statistics through one half. Bradley 42% from the field. Eight of 10 at the free throw line. Three of eight from deep. The difference, turnovers and points off turnovers. Well, that's exactly what the doctor ordered. But when you're Bradley, they started to score easily. Hickman had the first 10 points. So he got into a rhythm very early. Now you've got a big man with a back cut versus pressure. Man, do I love a big guy that can pass. Pressure defense, Dean gets it, turns the corner again. Defense creates offense, and then to finish the half, Christian Davis puts it up there, Hannah with the follow-up. That's just EFT, energy, focus, and toughness, and that's what we saw from the Bradley Braves. 20 of Bradley's 37 first-half points in the paint. Connor Hickman, the only guy on either side in double figures. Number 10 has 10 points to lead all scores. Well, he just plays with the toughness, and when you look at him, you know, I don't know if he'd be the first, second, or third guy you'd pick in a gym for a pickup game, but I'll tell you, if you want to win, you, you'd have him on your squad, an exceptional two-way player that's just physically strong and mentally tough. Well, obviously, UTEP needs to be better on this end, but how do the Miners get a little more on the offensive side of things? By their defense. I mean, that is, they're not a good three-point shooting team. A year ago, they struggled to make free throws and threes, but if you can push the ball, get the ball into the paint, that's going to be the biggest key right now to get on the board for them. And, and they do it right there by getting to the free throw line. They get fouled. That counts just like making a dunk, a jumper, or, you know, obviously not a three because you don't have a chance to get three points. But that's a good start with aggressiveness and attack mode, Chris. Sid Powell only played nine minutes that first half, was sidelined for the bulk of it with a couple fouls. CBS Sports recognizes Native American Heritage Month, a time to honor the culture, traditions, and achievements of the nation's original citizens. Six points for Zid Powell. I expect we're going to see a lot of aggressiveness and pressure defensively. And Bradley, having trouble inbounding, has to burn a timeout. Early stoppage here in the opening moments of the second half in the SoCal Challenge Championship. I'm so glad you're my personal shopper. I'm your bodyguard. Oh, yeah, that's right, right. Day and night, right? I actually only work the day shift. Well, then who am I talking to at 3 a.m.? I think you're confusing me with your Discover card again. I am? Yeah, it's their 24-7 customer service. They also protect you from fraud on unauthorized purchases. Oh, really? 
24-7 customer service. What do you protect me from? Mostly yourself. And $0 fraud liability. Friends might be having babies, but you've got your own little bundle of joy right here. Just 99 cents for warm, chili, melty cheddar cheese, and crunchy Fritos wrapped in a tortilla blanket. Now that's a deal, baby. The Sonic 99 cent Fritos Chili Cheese Junior Wrap. Behold, a new breed. Ready to swarm. Ready to sting. The defiant, power-packed, all-new hybrid electric Dodge Hornet RT. Performance electrified. Why get someone one big gift when you can get them a bunch of mini gifts? Like these little Reese's. Look, they're already wrapped. So convenient. All you have to do is put them under the tree or stuff them in a stocking. Grand Canyon University specializes in helping you fit a master's degree in business into your busy day. Your graduation team, led by your own GCU counselor, provides you with the personal support you need to succeed. Find your purpose. Visit gcu.edu. Well, earlier today at the SoCal Challenge, the sand bracket wrapped up and the Tarleton State basketball team took care of business down in Cal State Bakersfield in the final. And they rode that wave of momentum back to the Lone Star State after a couple of wins in this building. Chris, I'll tell you what. I don't know if people understand it or watching how hard it is to win a game, any game in college basketball. But I'll tell you what. It's so hard to win a championship, and those guys, it was a special afternoon, and they should be enjoying the night uh, winning the championship in, in the SoCal. Sending our best out to Tarleton State men's basketball head coach Billy Gillespie away from the team dealing with some medical issues this week. Former head coach at UTEP in Kentucky, among other stops. I'm He's hoping coach gets uh, back at it soon, but his team took care of business here in Orange County. A basketball lifer. He just you always find Billy in a gym, and he always has a good story to make you laugh. Foul against Bradley. It's on Darius Hanna. <laughs> Joe Golding, UTEP's third-year head coach. He's always led defensive-minded teams. He feels like... This year's team can bring a little more on the offensive end, but the Miners turn it over for an 11th time in this game. You know, on Monday I watched his shoot around and I ranked it out of 10, a 9. Then I think, okay, so he's just excited he's here. This afternoon I watched his shoot around, it was a 13 on a scale of 10. I mean, he brings it. And, uh, you know, it all starts at the head of the snake. And UTEP has a great leader in Golden. There's the back cut and that set up the dribble drive. Uh, the pressure on that entry pass wasn't like what we saw to start the game, so we'll see how that evolves. Frazier from up top. Atlason clears it away for Bradley. UTEP one for eight from deep in this game. They're just not getting enough easy baskets on the other end. Duke Dean misfires, and Tay Hardy rips it away from Malavai Leons. Here comes Powell, he's got an edge, flips it up, no whistle, here comes Duke Dean and Bradley. Atlason finds Leons, he loses the handle, Hardy on the floor to get it. And Powell couldn't quite catch it from Calvin Solomon. I, that, I like the thought because, again, it's a pace score, but, again, you mentioned it when we saw the stats. The 10 turnovers hurt them. They didn't get into the paint as much, and they gave up way too many easy baskets, and, and, and Bradley definitely took advantage of that. Leons, as Solomon saves it in, and Hardy has it. A whole lot of defense coming out of halftime on both sides. Yeah. Both teams playing extremely hard. Only three points for Tay Hardy, UTEP's leading scorer so far. Hardy on an elbow jump shot, and he's on target. It was a good shot, because I have to say, 
Bradley did a great job having different people on him, giving him different looks, having fresh legs guarding him. They, they really handled him in that first 20 minutes. The Leons lines it up and misses. Bradley three for 10 from distance. Hardy attacks and draws a foul. So see if Tay Hardy can start to get going and well, he's trying to get a rhythm, and they're going to need more of this. You see the double comes, a little ball fake, and now he hits him at the elbow. A nice catch and shoot, elevates up, and that's what we've become accustomed to, seeing Hardy from the mid-range. Tay Hardy passing 900 career points tonight. Has a chance to reach 1,000 by the time it's all said and done. He Sixth year senior, well traveled, two seasons at Southern Miss, a year in junior college at Pearl River in Louisiana and East Carolina for a season. UTEP's leading scorer a year ago at a smidge inside of 13 points per. You know what's nice about him? He could have left. He could have got into the transfer portal. And you really got to respect him that he wanted to stay there. You know, they didn't have a great year. We talked about that a little bit ago. And he decided to stay, and he believed in Joe Golding. He believed in the university and the program. And it was great to have him stay. Yeah, UTEP brings seven guys back from last season's roster. And Joe Golding called it uh, quite the haul in this day and age of college basketball to have that many guys back. Jonovic turns to his right. Couldn't get it. And a foul on Hickman. Yeah, he missed it. It was one of the first times that the big fellow missed the open guy in the corner. Atlason was in that right corner, just wide open, nobody near him. It would have been a nice little catch, locate, deliver. You know, the one, the one thing Bradley has to worry about right now, they've got 14 fouls, I believe. And, and you know, we're 17-03 we're left in this second half, so they've got to do a better job defending without fouling like they did in that first half. Zid Powell works downhill, hangs in the air, couldn't get it. And Bradley can't control the rebound. Birch and Jonovic chasing after it. A second chance here for the Miners. Like to say that was good defense because they were there, but right here you see them come in, they go up, so they wall it up pretty good. He takes his chin off the rim, but good defense is culminated by grabbing the rebound and being able to convert to the other end of the floor. UTEP shooting just 35% from the field. Hardy couldn't get it, grabs the loose ball. Shot clock in a single digits. Powell on the crossover. Rejected by Jonovic. Great help side defense as the ball moved, he moved. The Marion Birch, the freshman attacks, and he's swatted away by Frazier. For both teams defending at a high level, contrasting styles, but both blocking. But when you go straight up, there's nowhere to go when you got a 7-1 guy sitting there in the lane. And again, the key is he didn't stand stationary. He was moving as the ball moved. He was in perfect position. We always talk about offensive triangles, right? Every good offense, you have an offensive triangle. But defensively, we call them flat triangles. Great job by Bradley. Well coached. Davis down the end line, feeds Duke Dean. And that's an offensive foul. He knocks over Tay Hardy. Well, I like the way Tay stayed low, sat in the invisible chair, moving his feet, showing his hands, taking it right on the chest. And, 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 and that's tough to do, man, because Duke Dean is one of the quickest guards that I've seen in person in four decades of basketball. UTEP within seven. They trailed by 11 at halftime. And the Miners give it right back. An illegal screen set by John Dos Anjos. Say that three times. <laughs> Senior from Brazil in his second season at UTEP after two years at Florida Southwestern College and a year at LMU UTEP, their next game up in Los Angeles at Loyola Marymount. Well, they're enjoying this West Coast weather, that's for sure. Yeah, Joe Golding said no. Do some sightseeing on Thanksgiving tomorrow and the day after before they get ready to wrap up the three-game California road trip. I can take you inside the huddle on that one. You want to know where they're going? First stop, Venice Beach. 
Second stop, Santa Monica. But if you like good basketball, beaches and buckets with a little bit of flavor of defense, this is the place. Bradley up seven. We've got a good one. As the head of HR, I help lead a successful home security firm. Our teams work hard to secure our customers' most valuable assets. And while they do that, I work hard to secure ours, our people. That's why we chose Principal to provide the benefits and retirement plan that show our people just how much we appreciate them. Benefits help us keep top talent. Hi, Mom. Benefits help us grow because we know how important security is to all. Let me show you what goes on behind the scenes when making a shakaroni. Bust. We create a shakaroni my way. An extra large pizza topped with extra cheese and extra pepperoni. It's a simple recipe. We take everything you love, then we build it bigger. Pizza gets bigger when you shakaroni. Ooh, that's a lovely view. Huh? <laughs> what are you two looking at? Tick pick. What did you say? Tick pick. Tickets to the show with no hidden fees. Rufus hates being stuck inside. Luckily, Amy saved big at Amazon. It turns out with the right gear, Rufus rips. Shop Black Friday deals now. Ain't no secret in staying in your pride. You just gotta want it, baby. Eating almonds can help you recover from exercise. Fellas, get after it. So eat your almonds. Oh, you're proud. We are just getting started here at San Juan Capistrano. Tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern, our coverage of the SoCal Challenge concludes with Tulane and Cal squaring off for third place. Catch all the action here on CBS Sports Network. A couple of teams that felt like they could have gotten out of Monday's games with a victory, both eager to bounce back. Cal under first-year head coach Mark Madsen. And look, uh, Pac-12 in its final year with all of these teams together. Everybody but Oregon State and Washington State headed to a different conference next year. Yeah, I thought Arizona was going to be good. I talked earlier about Boswell, Love, and Bradley, you know, and, and they just beat Duke at Cameron, which is a tall task. But Colorado has surprised me. I love Cody Williams. He's a freshman that could be a lottery pick. K.J. Simpson is a stud, and Eddie Lampkin will be an impact, tra impact transfer in the Pac-12 this year. Well, Bradley still hasn't scored since the end of the first half. Yonavit trying to change that. And a foul on the Braves going for the loose ball. So UTEP, they've made adjustments. Bradley still with the goose egg more than four minutes off the clock in the second half. Miners have only scored four points over the first four plus minutes. Well, I, I explained it earlier when I said EFT, the energy focus and toughness. I mean, it's at a premium right now. And baskets are going to be hard to come by. You're seeing UTEP play more to their personality. You know, teams have a pattern of play. They did not get paint. They did not get easy baskets. So that's what they're trying to do, to generate it on the other end to be productive on this offensive side of the uh, half court line. The cuts are a little bit harder right now, as you can see. Just trying to get downhill. A good look for Frazier. Way too strong. Kalu on the offensive glass. Shot clock didn't reset. Kalu dumps it off. And Frazier hammers it back. Sometimes for UTEP, their best offense may be a missed shot because they were just ferocious on the offensive glass. Never gave up. The Miners have the first six points of the second half. Now within five. Here comes the pressure. You've got to have releases. Jonovic has the mouse in the house, and he scores off the window. Well, you're not kidding. That was a big boy move right there. Woo! Never got sped up, composed, used his lower body strength, dropped it in the cup. Teammates call him meta. Hamid Jonovic. First Bradley bucket of the second half. Kalu turns the corner, up with the right hand, missed it. And gets tied up with Malibai Leon, so he'll stay here with UTEP. Otis Frazier, we've seen him go up the escalator a couple of times tonight. You, you have it right here. <laughs> there, there's another one by Fra uh, Frazier the third. And then Jonovic, he says, if you can do it on that end, I'm going to weasel and wiggle my way into the lane on this end. Just a physical game right here. 
Frazier inside again. Two more for Otis Frazier the third. Did you notice where those points are coming from, partner? The paint opposite of settling early, not getting into the lane for the UTEP Miners. Yeah, the long line has not been fruitful to UTEP. Only five of them here on Monday, one for nine in this game. Atlison, corner pop, it swirls out. And last touched by Jonovic. Well, Frazier seems to be getting into a nice little rhythm here on the catch. He gives it to a team. He catches it, I'm sorry, on the baseline, and it's an easy deuce, a little high-low pass. Well, the Miners have hung in there and have chipped away at a deficit that was 11 coming out of halftime. Chance to get back within a possession. Powell off balance. Jonovic altered the shot and rips it away. Strong drive, better defense. Oh, his big post presence has been a problem. Hickman takes it to the cup, rejected by Powell. Here comes Solomon with a head of steam, and he's blocked at the rim. Frazier tried to power it back up and draws a foul. Well, Frazier has been like the Energizer Bunny on steroids. He just keeps moving and moving. But when you look at athletic defense right here, Hickman has the drive, and he just takes it to another level. That's fourth floor at Macy's. Relentless rim protection on both ends. Ten points for Frazier against Cal in the semis. UTEP 5-0 to start a season for the first time since the 2019-2020 campaign. Trying to start 6-0 for the first time since the 15-16 season. Miners have not been to the big dance since 2010. Three-point game. It's going to be fun for you and I to follow both these teams because both of them are going to have a chance to win their conference tournaments. Now, Conference USA looks a little different this year. You yeah. have the preseason pick to finish fifth out of ten teams. Conference that added Liberty, New Mexico State, Sam Houston State, Jacksonville State, but they lost North Texas, UAB, Florida Atlantic, and UTSA. Shot clock in a single digits. Hickman spins. A floater rolls off, and Kalu clears. High percentage shot. Not going to say it's a bad shot. That's just a tough shot to make. Ed Bradley's got to get back to moving the ball, back cuts, skipping it to open shooters on the perimeter, and then you either got the shot or they have to defend the long closeout. Seven minutes off the second half clock. Bradley's been held to two points. A testament to this UTEP defense. All fueled by pressure. That's deflected out with six to shoot. Leaves Joe Golding teams. It just requires you to bring a hard hat and a lunch pail every possession. Well, I know this. If you don't play hard and you don't play smart and you don't play together, you're going to sit on the bench inside of him. Late in the clock, Powell has to trigger it up. Nearly banked it in. The rebound ricochets right back to him. Powell through the contact. And he's headed to the strike. That's the relentlessness I'm talking about in terms of the, the, the focus and the toughness. He takes a shot. He has the wherewithal to run it down. He knows the shooter always knows if it's going to miss, uh, if it doesn't rim out. And he knew the angle to go get, grab that rebound. And then he went old school fundamental. And he was able to shot fake and get the defender up in the air. And that created the contact. I kind of got bog boggled up here. You mentioned earlier, Chris, the transfer from Buffalo, but it's just, he, he, he's a bucket getter. You know, he can get to the paint, he can shoot it from the perimeter, and he's good for making timely shots when his team needs it. Powell goes one for two. Hannah clears it away for Bradley. Two-point lead for the Braves. They led by 11 at the half. Hickman spins. And scores. See the difference between that shot and his last shot? The last shot was falling away. That time he was able to pivot and collect himself and go up and score. Now they've changed into a zone. I thought this really hurt UTEP for like three minutes ago in that first half when they went to zone. And right there it does. They cough it up. A good call by Coach Wardle. Only had 13 turnovers. Against Cal on Monday. That's UTEP's 14th giveaway of this game. Be interesting to see what they come back in man or zone next time down the other end of the floor for Bradley. Yeah, 
Hickman misfires from the corner. Bradley averaging 10 made threes per game, just three of 12. Back to man to man, trying to keep him off balance. Another takeaway for Bradley, punched back by Hardy. Frazier cuts. Good defense by Hannah to wall him off in the lane. Hardy picked up by the reigning Missouri Valley Defensive Player of the Year. Two to shoot. Powell at the horn. Missed everything. And a shot clock turnover will take us to a timeout. Whole lot of defense here in the SoCal Challenge Championship. The Bradley Braves, 41-37 over the UTEP Miners. We're lucky to have this team working for us. Our therapists give their all each day by helping those who need it most. We take great pride, not just in the job our team does, but in them as people, our people. And while we're in the business of taking care of others, it's important our therapists know that with benefits from principal, they're taken care of too. the new iPhone 15. With that amazing camera, wish my family had them. You're an action star. Take action. Join T-Mobile. This holiday at T-Mobile, get four new iPhone 15s on us and four lines of unlimited for 25 bucks a line. Let me show you what goes on behind the scenes when making a shakaroni. Bust We create a shakaroni my way. An extra large pizza topped with extra cheese and extra pepperoni. It's a simple recipe. We take everything you love, then we build it bigger. Pizza gets bigger when you shakaroni. On a devastating Fansville by Dr. Pepper. Whoa! That was past interference! That's it. Season's over. Our program's cursed. See? I can't watch this. Every year I fall for the preseason hype. I made all this for nothing. Never watching football again. Hey guys, that was the first play of the game. Oh. Oh. Maybe we overreacted. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. SoCal Challenge Championship, four-point lead for Bradley. And the Braves have been terrific on the defensive end. Well, it's all about connectivity. There's five guys in there on a string. Look at the big man. There's a big keeping another big from getting into the lane and causes the turnover again, not letting someone get by. The double comes, you don't reach, you don't stab. They're gonna make the big man travel right there. And they just have the great wall of China. This has been something that there's drilled and they talk about. And really going into this game, if you're Bradley and you're talking to your team, you're telling your team, our offense is really gonna start with our defense. You don't wanna turn it over and then you gotta hit shots. And when you hit shots, that means UTEP has to take the ball out of the basket and they can't run freely. Miners showing some light full court pressure out of the timeout. Almost nine minutes off the second half clock. There's a denial on the entry pass. Now watch the back pick. You want to get the layup, but now you screen away and get into your dribble drive game. Bradley has only scored four points since the break. Nine minutes gone by. That's wow. how good UTEP's defense has been coming out of halftime. Got to be strong with the basketball. Oh, Hannah with a nice spin underneath. Puts it in, plus the foul. Darius Hanna. Two plus one. I tell you, big time move. Compose. He's got the rhythm dribble. You don't fight through pressure. You spin by pressure, which takes him baseline. And you see that yell right there. It just felt good because they've been lacking for points. So he's able to hopefully get them a three point play if you're a Bradley fan. 85th game for Hannah in a Braves uniform tonight. He spent all four of his college seasons at Bradley. Six point lead for the Braves. 4.6 rebounds for Darius Hanna tonight. I love Hickman and Dean. They just bring a toughness to this team as veteran backcourt mates. Dos Anjos in and out. He's missed all three of his attempts. UTEP one for 11 from the perimeter. Great contest, great two-hand rebound. I love guys that go off two feet and grab the basketball with two hands. Leon's around the shot fake and turns it over. 
You know, I get the MO of UTEP, but on closeout, sometimes you have to have a defensive discipline. And that comes with knowing, is it a hot closeout? Is it cold? Hot if they can shoot it, cold if you cushion the drive, but you just can't do a flyby because then, Chris, it's a number situation. It's five on four or three on two on the back side. Coach, we've praised these defenses, and each of these teams had a day off yesterday, but you can't help but feel like those close semifinal games, they exerted so much energy that maybe fatigue has been a factor in this second half. You'd like to think that, but it's so early on. And, and trust me, it's a ball game. You know, when you come to play, what do guys do? They're in college to get a degree, obviously, but they come to play. But I think, I think fatigue makes cowards of us all. I think these guys are fighting through fatigue. Kevin Kalu with the bucket on one end. UTEP dives on the floor. Jump ball keeps it here with Bradley. Kalu has been really good in terms of just being patient. He looks the ball into his hands, had his target hands up, and it's a nice finish inside for, again, a paint score, which they did not have many in that first half. Kevin Kalu, the 6'9 junior from Baltimore, six points, five rebounds in 20 minutes against Cal on Monday. Hickman locks it in, and it's broken up by UTEP. Four to shoot as David Terrell Jr. knocked it out. Hickman will trigger in from the baseline. Lobs it up, Hannah catches. Has to hoist at the horn, and it's off the right side of the iron. Another stop for the Miners. Here comes Hardy. And an offensive foul. It's on Calvin Solomon trying to create space for Tay Hardy on his way to the basket. Hope you had the under here. Under what? Under sea level? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was walking on the beach all day <laughs> after shooting. That, that's where your mind's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went under a couple times boogie boarding outside of the Laguna Cliffs Marriott. That's a heck of a team hotel. These teams are all staying at that Laguna Cliffs Marriott. I had never been there, but what a destination for players to experience Southern California and all the fans that have traveled here. Hickman pitches to the corner. Leons into the paint, turns around and hits the short jump shot. Malavai Leons has been qu pretty quiet by his standards tonight. He's got nine points, five rebounds, came in averaging 16 points per game this season. Zone defense right here, just trying to get UTEP out of this rhythm that they've been able to get in the second half. A hardy miss fires. UTEP one of 12 from the three-point line in this game. That was a good block out down there by Jonovic. Reach and foul on David Terrell Jr. Or Leon's just, he, again, you feel pressure, you spin away, just a finesseful move, and he does a great job of using his length, bringing it back a little bit, but letting the ball release at its highest point. And that's just icing on the cake because he's such a great defensive player, right? Reigning defensive player of the year. When you have guys like that, you're supposed to win your conference. Great job recruiting. Malavai Leon's last season, the first player in Missouri Valley history to record more than 50 blocks and 50 steals in a season. Zit Powell drops the hammer. He cocks it and rocks it. Rocks it. <laughs> You're not kidding, partner. He read that. I, wa I watched his eyes. He was coming at us. They got huge. Shot the gap. UTEP basketball at its finest. Hannah catches inside, powers it up, and scores off the window. Love the way he collects himself. He's never in a hurry. You can't speed him up. The senior from Milwaukee with six points. And the lead grows back to six for Bradley. He hit that game winner at UAB with like 2.5 seconds left on the clock, if I remember right. He's having a good start to his season. Powell, jump shot, rolls off. Now Bradley, they've already picked up some, some nice resume wins. UAB, Utah State in overtime, Tulane here a couple nights ago. 
47-41, Bradley on top. Boy, Powell, he's just on fire in transition with the hammer. He's doing it all. He wanted to punish that rim. What an exciting game. Six points. Bradley's up. Let's do another round. You can do it. In this clinic, we pride ourselves on putting others first. It's on us to help care for our clients' well-being, to help them adapt. It's inspiring to work at a place where our patients succeed and we as therapists do too. With great benefits from principal, we feel appreciated for the work we do. You weren't made for moderate to severe Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis, but Antivio is. In clinical trials, Antivio helped many people achieve long-term relief and remission. Infusion and serious allergic reactions can happen during or after treatment. Antivio may increase risk of infection, which can be serious. Although unlikely, a risk of PML, a rare, serious, potentially fatal brain infection, cannot be ruled out. Tell your doctor if you have an infection, experience frequent infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Liver problems can occur. It's time to ask your healthcare provider about Antivio. Go to Antivio.com to learn more about the number one prescribed biologic for Crohn's and UC. Antivio, Antivio, Antivio. Cracked windshield on your new car? You don't have to take it to the dealer. Bring it to SafeLight. We do more replacements and recalibrations than anyone else. Thank you so much. Schedule now. SafeLight Repair, SafeLight Replace. Well, coming up next, get in-depth highlights and analysis of the latest hoops action as we go coast to coast on Inside College Basketball right here on CBS Sports Network. Right along the coast here, Dana Point, just a stone's throw from San Juan Capistrano. Third annual SoCal Challenge in the championship. The Bradley Braves on top of the UTEP Miners, 47-41. Whale watching golf. Long walks along the beach, your favorite thing to do, Coach Miller. And I did have sunscreen <laughs> on, but I tell you, I, we, we mentioned the Laguna Cliffs Marriott, but I want to give a, a, a shout out and thanks to the hospitality of our friends at Vista Dana Point. They've just been marvelous with all they've done to help this tournament become one of the best tournaments in the country right now during Thanksgiving week. San Juan Capistrano, not difficult to reach. Five major airports within an hour or fewer of here. Late in the clock, and Hickman did not get that off in time. Wouldn't have mattered as it doesn't graze iron. So UTEP gets another stop, and the Miners have been playing behind this entire second half. Trailed by 11 coming out of the break. Trailed by six here inside of seven minutes. Well, I'll tell you what's been good. It's been Bradley changing their defense. We didn't see that the other night. So let's see what they're in now. It looks like, yep, they're in a 1-2-2 uh, they're in a one, two, two zone. Could flatten out into a 3-2 or a 2-3. But... Elijah Jones, goodness. He just amazes me when I look out there and I go, that's a 6-8 freshman. You think he gets that bounce from mom or dad? Mom was the hooper, but uh, Pops was was a defensive back in the NFL for a handful of seasons. Well, I'm be political. He gets it from both of them, but he definitely <laughs> gets his looks from his mom. <laughs> and I, I, I hope mom is watching. A turnaround jump shot settles in for Damarian Birch, the frosh from Milwaukee with a timely bucket. Six-point lead for Bradley. Look at Birch's stance. He's down low as a freshman. He's been well coached in high school. Doesn't reach. He's keeping him in front. Well, power right off of his knee. And see, that's the contrasting style. You know, when you see, but but let, let's look at Jones with these good jeans. <laughs> he, I think he bent the rim. They may need to check that, but, but wow. He just collects himself. I call that the, the rhythm dribble, and he goes up. But what I was saying before, Birch didn't reach or gamble. He just stayed in front and caused the turnover. Hickman with a hand in his face. And Powell able to keep his dribble alive. Rebounds it for UTEP. Bradley setting a little bit for jumpers. Not bad shots, but not the shots they were getting going to the hoop early in that first half. Look at and Jones then. rip away the offensive rebound inside. A second chance for the Miners. They had 20 second chance points against Cal in the semis. 
I think they're going to give a bench warning to uh, Coach Golden for being on the court or in the way of the ref on that sideline. Jonovic on his way out. Darius Hanna, after a short rest, returns for Bradley. 12 to shoot for the Miners. Getting close to crunch time here at the SoCal Challenge. Solomon off the back of the iron. Atkinson is a really good defender in there for a freshman. I, I love the way he holds his ground and stands tall. Oh, Leon's with a pretty step through and finish. Well, he's got such finesse. Uh, you know, he, he, he's a pit bull defensively, but he can wiggle and move his way to the rim using his life. Hardy with a good look. Buries the three. That's only UTEP's second triple tonight. And it pulls him within five with 5.02 left. From a similar sweet spot, Tay Hardy connects. UTEP trails by five. Trying to start 6-0 for the first time in eight years under third-year head coach Joe Golding. Here's what's ahead for UTEP. One more game here in the Golden State, heading up to Los Angeles to visit LMU on Saturday, followed by a two-game homestand against the Islanders and Western New Mexico. Then back out west to visit Dana Altman and the Oregon Ducks, and a homecoming of sorts as Joe Golding Heads to Abilene to take on an ACU program he had a ton of success with before taking the head job in El Paso. And Bradley had a two on one. They turned it over. Yeah, just a, a poor spacing in, in the sense you've got to see that you had a teammate down there with the defender. I would have just pulled it back and, uh, and, and got a good quality of shot. 14th Bradley turnover. Hardy dives on it. Can't get it. Hickman on the run out. I'll tell you what. I mean, that, that, that's a taste of your own medicine. I haven't seen Hickman deny that much. And he read it. He must have felt like he could go for it. He was able to deflect it and it turned into an easy bucket. Four and a half minutes left to play. David Terrell Jr. misfires. Atlas in there to rip it away for Bradley. I'm getting impressed by, by Almar as a freshman. I, I, I know I keep talking about him, but I just look at him and I say, okay, put 15 more pounds on him of muscle and, and get him to a sophomore junior. He's going to be a force to reckon with for the Bradley Braves. 6'8 freshman from Iceland. Really shoot it from the outside. Leon's along the end line, up and under for two. Wow, just finding cracks and crevices on the dribble drive, being able to go up, kept his chin on the rim the entire time to get it off the window. Bradley has stretched the lead back to nine. Joe Golding wants to talk things over. 3.54 left to play in the championship. I'll tell you, off the dribble drive, it's up under. It's not Dr. J, it's Leon's. It's never too soon for college hoops. It's the Emerald Coast Classic on CBS Sports Network. Guys, got hair loss? I know what you're thinking. Should I shave my head? Comb it over? Wear a hat? Just stop. This isn't 1970. Keep your hair and your confidence because Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts, can give you your real hair back permanently. Check them out because they're giving away an absolutely free information kit and a free gift card to everyone who scans this QR code. Dude, you don't have to look like your dad because this isn't your dad's hair loss treatment. People all over the country trust Bosley because they're ahead of the curve. They use the latest technology to give you your real hair back. And the best part, Bosley's permanent solution is protected by the Bosley Guarantee. 
Let them show you for free how awesome your hair could look with an absolutely free information kit and a gift card for $250 off. Scan the QR code. Don't wait. Scan the code now and ask about the Bosley Guarantee. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Laguna Cliffs Marriott Resort and Spa. By Visit Dana Point, the best beaches in Southern California. And by Wilson, the official basketball of the SoCal Challenge. Uh, based on current metrics for intelligence, dolphins are one of the most intelligent animals in the world. And that's a safe bet considering they're hanging out on the SoCal coast, right down the street from the SoCal Challenge here on Championship Wednesday. The Bradley Braves have taken a nine point lead over UTEP to the Miners have a late punch in them inside of four minutes. Where that zone really converges when the ball goes inside. Active hands on defense all night long from Bradley. They've forced UTEP into 18 turnovers. Six steals for the Braves and no easy makes on this end for the Miners. You want to have high hands. You want to take away vision and you want to take away airspace. Hardy underneath. Blocked from behind by Leons with one to shoot. One of the best things Bradley has done this entire game is their help side defense of just, he sees the lane, even though Hannah goes up, now you got Leons coming to save the day. That's when you can say that your teammate has your back, literally, coming from the back side. Off the knee of Hannah, it'll stay one on the shot clock. The other thing, Chris, that has benefited Bradley going to the zone is you have to understand that you can't play zone unless you understand man-to-man -man defense because all zone is playing man-to-man -man in a quadrant and then passing a, the ball off on the dribble or the pass to a teammate in their particular square. They wound up resetting the shot clock to 20 there. I had it on one, the initial inbound pass. And put 20 on it on the second. So a little more time for UTEP, Powell. On a bounce inside, Solomon rolling to the rim. He missed it, and Kalu is there to flush it back. The easy put back. Dean should have done his work early, got around him and rooted him out, but at that height size, he would have got it regardless. Hannah inside, and he sandwiches his way for two more. But Hannah's been impressive. You know, a lefty, I talked about him the other night. He's so skilled, a face-up shooter, but I, I just love the way he does all the little things. I tried to lob it to Kalu. This time, Bradley broke it up. And Dean's a blur in transition right there. You got to pick him up after half court. Make him play sideline to sideline, not get down the tunnel. Clock is a factor here in two and a half minutes. And a foul on the Miners, sixth on UTEP this half. Hannah has really had an impact on this game. He catches it, he collects himself, splits two defenders, and he's able to go up and score. I just, I, I just said it a second ago, he's doing so many things that aren't on a stat sheet, but uh, having an epic night trying to help his team win a championship here in the SoCal Challenge. Such a good ball handler for his size. On a bounce inside, it sets up Duke Dean. Here comes Tay Hardy. 2-10 left. Hardy pulls the trigger and buries the three. The Miners needed it. It's a six-point game. Now let's see if they pick up their defensive intensity on this end. That nice little momentum basket. What are they going to do defensively? Can they force a turnover and create an easy shot? A dozen for Tay Hardy as we dwindle inside of two minutes. And you know, Chris, I think he only had three at the half. Hickman spins. Wave it off. Whistled for traveling. Bradley turns it over. 
What is it about UTEP's defense that sometimes will speed up a ball handler and get them out of control like that? Well, they're just showing different looks. I mean, they're not going to be able to reach and stab every time, but but their MO is just to keep you off balance, sort of like Bradley's doing going from man to zone. But, but Golding has built, built all his success at Abilene Christian and here in just pressure, relentless pressure. Oh, the door has been left open for the Miners in crunch time. A six-point game with 1.35 to go. Hardy for three. It's good. He got another one. It's a three-point game. Now you see here, now they're going full court pressure. And this isn't to buy time. This is to cause turnovers. Tay Hardy catching fire in crunch time. Timeout Bradley. A 6-0 run for the Miners on back-to-back -back trays for Tay Hardy. Three-point game down the stretch of the SoCal Challenge Championship. Miners go away here in the SoCal Challenge Championship. No, it's easy. He read the defense, had nothing downhill, so he gets to the wing and he's able to pull up. Got a little bit of a rhythm. It was a sideways contest. He had an easy look at the rim. A quick six points for someone that they count on nightly to put up points, uh, you know, and, and, and get his production. Well, fans of the orange and blue keeping faith here down the stretch. Less than a minute ago, Bradley had a nine-point lead. The Braves advantage just three out of the Brian Wardle timeout. Where does Bradley go to try and increase this lead late? Well, they're going to go inside. They're, they're, going to, they're going to get some downhill drives, look to either finish back cuts against the pressure. Leons draws two defenders, has it knocked away, recovers. Atlison with five to shoot. Out to Dean with two. He doesn't know. Dean has to hoist it up and off the front rim. Hannah taps it out. Here comes Zid Powell. Good defensive possession down there. Hardy on the blow by. Blocked at the rim. UTEP does not need the foul. Hickman speeds up, misses the layup. And headed to the free throw line with 36 seconds left. So what Bradley did well, okay, right here on the defense, you get beat up top, but who is it? It's Hannah to save the day, and Leon's is right there. He just goes in, they form a wall, can't get the shot, another block shot, and they save the day. What I like what Bradley did right there offensively, Chris, is they're trying to beat the, the, the defense of UTEP down the floor so that they're not having to deal with the pressure. And that was Hickman on the, on the fast break lane drive. Christian Davis returns, replacing Duke Dean for Bradley. Hickman has a team high 15. Remember, he missed those free throws late to give Tulane an opportunity Monday, but he cashes in on both here. Drop back into a zone defense right here, Bradley. Full court to half court zone. 20 seconds left. Solomon turns the corner and scores off the window. It bounces in. Joe Golding takes timeout with 17.2. So a strong finish on the inside for Calvin Solomon. And the Miners are back within three. Well, Bradley playing its first set of games in California since a December 2017 trip to San Diego State. Trying to hold on late and take home some hardware from the SoCal Challenge. 
Doesn't get easier from here. Vermont and the Catamounts are a really good team. Had a nice run in the Myrtle Beach Invitational last week. And Murray State on the road. That's not going to be easy. Indiana State's a quality opponent, as is Akron. Cleveland State always in the Horizon League mix. Uh, this is, you know, maybe not the, the Power Five, the big names, but this is a tough schedule for Bradley. It really is a tough schedule. What I've noticed, the common denominator of the teams in the SoCal Challenge out here that are playing for this championship surfboard uh, is that they all play good schedules because there's three seasons in college basketball. There's the non-conference where you tweak things, you find out what works, who works well together. Your conference season where every team wants to win a regular season championship and then your postseason tournament. So right now, these are little quizzes until they get to the meat and potatoes and they start their conference play of all the teams in this tournament. Brian Wardle, the former Marquette point guard, has done such a terrific job turning around this Bradley program. They won just five games in his first season. By year four, he had him back in the big dance. Okay, and it started with a culture, a culture of work. Up next, we've got Tulane and Cal in the third place game with the SoCal Championship. Both suffered some tight losses here against these teams on Monday. A quick foul delivered by UTEP to Christian Davis as Corey Camper Jr. reaches in with 15.8. Yeah, I like the way that they set the three across the free throw line. They weren't able to get ball reversal, but you always want to flash someone to the middle, and then you're filling that backside, trying to move the ball in and against pressure, especially full court. You don't want to dribble through it when, when they're in that zone. You want to pass through it fake a pass to make a pass and advance the ball and then just as importantly they're going to have to meet their pass because this uh, this defense out there is going to be flying one and one for Davis and he connects on the first now two for three at the foul line tonight 71 percent on the season he's a guy I watched the UAB game as I was preparing for this never scored a, scored a field goal eight rebounds two assists three blocks he can impact the game doing other things than just making buckets Zid Powell finishes to the corner camper has to hurry takes it to the rim misses the layup it's tapped back in and the foul for Otis Frazier. Well, that's exactly what you didn't want. You did not want a foul. You've got to defend without fouling. Now it compounds. They score the basket. The clock is stopped, and they can put another paint. And you can see he has him side saddled and gets him on the arm right there. Easy call for the zebra. Frazier did a nice job to stay patient, make sure it fell off the cylinder before he touched it. Absolutely. A very important free throw, and Frazier connects. Two-point game with 4.4. And Bradley will burn its final timeout up two. So if you're Bradley in this press attack, if you're having problems getting it in and you go to set a screen for somebody, you've got to step back. But Leon's has been unbelievable tonight. Uh, just just giving what we're accustomed to seeing for this Bradley basketball pro there you can see on the dribble drive He just uses his length. He never gets sped up there. He doesn't fight pressure He spins away from pressure run the floor you shall receive it and be a high flyer and He just impresses me because I love him as a defensive player But he brings another level of offense to this Bradley team Chris Malavai Leon's 13 points six rebounds had a team high 18 against Tulane in the first round. Could be headed towards most outstanding player honors. Well, I'll tell you, he certainly uh, uh, is right in there, you know, depending on how this plays out. Just a really good basketball player on both ends. But right here, if you're in that huddle, what I was talking about before the replay, if they're going to have any screening action, they can switch UTEP to deny, but the screener should step back to the ball, and now he has a defender on his back if, in fact, UTEP is the switch, and I think they will switch. Joe Golding, his teams have always prided themselves on defense, and UTEP... If they can't get a turnover, they've got to foul immediately. Well, the, the first thing you want to do is you want to get the fives. Well, there, no, there's nobody on the ball, so they still could get the five-second count. But right now, let's see if the guys in blue are going to switch everything. Leon's triggers in, gets it to Davis. 3.7, and Davis 
to the free throw line where he just connected on a pair. What was interesting, UTEP, and I don't know if this was by design, but they didn't switch, and Frazier stayed on Hickman. They did not want Hickman to get the basketball. Still the one and one for Bradley. Might we have another minor, minor miracle brewing at the SoCal Challenge. They needed some help here at the free throw line. Davis calmly sinks the first one. Well, Chris, I mean, Monday night we had two great games, yes, right? Yes, we did. Both of them came down to the final possession. <laughs> it was amazing. This one has a chance to come down to the final possession, but the Miners need a Christian Davis free throw miss here. Davis hits it. Bradley in the driver's seat. Powell to Hardy, and that will do it. The Bradley Braves are the 2023 SoCal Challenge Surf Division Champions. Well, we started the game off, and I said they were two very well-coached defensive teams with contrasting styles, and we saw a little bit from both. But I thought it was the ability of Bradley to adjust to the pressure that put him in a position to finish this game. This game was just about everything we expected. Defensive intensity from wire to wire. Bradley led for the bulk of the night and led all the way through in the second half. The Braves will ride that surfboard back to Peoria, Illinois, 5 and 0. Oh. It's tough. There's not very many undefeated teams in the country, and we both alluded to this. Both these teams have a chance to win their conference championship and maybe dance in March. So Bradley holds off UTEP late, handing the Miners a loss for the first time this season. The Braves are back in action Saturday taking on Vermont. Congratulations to the Bradley Braves, the 2023 SoCal Challenge Surf Division Champions, a 63-59 victory here over the UTEP Miners. We are back with the third place game. Coming up next on CBS Sports Network, the California Golden Bears take on the Tulane Green Wave. For Dave Miller and our entire crew, I'm Chris Sylvester saying so long from San Juan Capistrano. Bradley wins the SoCal Challenge Championship. The surf division, very cool. Who keeps the board, I wonder? Right? <laughs> you laugh. It's funny. It's gonna, it's gonna cause problems, you'll see. Uh, welcome back inside our New York studios. Adam Zucker here alongside Shelvin Mack, Roy Hibbert, John Rothstein. Get, up. Getting a little punchy here in the gobble gobble portion of the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, but, but UTEP got so close uh, a number of times in this game. Got within two there even down the stretch after starting the second half so hot, but Bradley making their free throws and uh, avoiding overtime here. Yes, Christian Davis at the end. He had went four for four and that was four tough free throws. They wasn't guaranteed. You no, know, you had to make the first one then the second one one on one. Those are high pressure situations. And but I, what I love most is about the defense.